You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. My name is Joyce DeRiga. I'm the editor of the Chicago Catholic, which is the newspaper of the Archdiocese. And this is where we go beyond the headlines to interview the people making the news that we're covering in the paper. And today our special guest is Greg Bim. He's the retiring, uh, longtime director of the band program at Marian Catholic. And I mean, he's outstanding. Let me read this to you there. Um, under his, he's been there for 46 years. He de- really developed the program, took, the, took it from about 70 kids to over 300. And they won seven Bands of America Grand National Championships. It's a big deal. 42 state titles, like consecutive. Nobody's ever done that uh, before. And they've also been in you know, the Macy's Day uh, Parade. They've been in the Tournament of Roses Parade. They've marched in an inaugural uh, presidential inauguration parade. So, Greg, welcome to Beyond the Headlines. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. So, um, now technically school's over, right? So are you officially retired or? <laughs> I have, um, school is over, grades are due today. Um, but I have 46 years of stuff. Oh my gosh. That I'm. I'm, I'm putting together. So I, yeah, it's, it's a, a long trek to. Uh, well, and you're not leaving, you're going to work with the advancement off. Yes. Um, yeah. And then you're going to also stay on as a consultant with the band and, you know, right. Yes. Show, okay. So tell us a little bit about, you know, we talked on the, when we did the interview, we talked about how you landed at Marian Catholic um, and how they they welcomed you and it it was the right place can you talk a little bit about that how you got started it there and sure um as i said uh i was doing graduate work at western illinois university and i got a call from a friend who was um teaching band at some of the the local grade schools here the local catholic grade school and he called and said there was an opening at marion and and he said the band is not very big but you know, it might have uh, possibilities. And, and my uh, my advisor, who had been my high school band director, um, said, you should um, go and look into this. And if you get the job, try and do a good job for a couple of years, and then you can move to a big program. Well, um, I ended up getting hired, and this turned into a big program. And so I've been here ever since. Um, I, it's interesting. My, my first um time coming in i i interviewed with uh the principal of course sister mary alberta which is uh, a whole nother story she is a just a, a wonder of a human being and just um an amazing administrator she is now in her 90s i believe and still active at the mother house in springfield she's working uh, she actually does uh, some computer work at sacred heart griffin and i you know i just hope that 20 years from now, I can be anywhere near that, that, uh, vibrant. Right. But, uh, the person I interviewed with other than sister Alberta was, uh, sister Mary Anna Claire, who had been here since the beginning of the school in 1958 and had been the, the, uh, the head of the music department. And she was the one who started the band. Uh, she wasn't the band director, but she was the one that was the ramrod behind the whole thing. And so she was, um, she was up in years at that time and she was in rather poor health but she was still very powerful as a person. And we had a, a great conversation and, uh, and she and, and sister Alberta decided to, uh, to give me a shot and it's worked out. 
Now, you've won all these awards. You can see if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see all the, um, I'm assuming that's awards or accolades on the on the wall behind you. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah I, I kind of feel funny when they're, you know, when I'm doing a, a thing like this because they're kind of, but I, I needed a place to put them. Yeah, <laughs> so. not just in a box somewhere. But I'd asked you, you know, how, how do you go about winning all these things? And, and you said it's not about the winning. And you have this whole philosophy about creating um, good human beings. Can you talk good about people. that? Yeah, good people. Sure. Uh, I, I learned very early on that, that uh, winning is not, the, is not and cannot be the goal. It just it, it clouds everyone's judgment. Um, a quick story. When I, I, I had a friend who was teaching in another school here in, in uh, Illinois, and the, the band program was was pretty solid, um, and they had been very successful. And for them, it was all about what trophies they were winning. Um, it, it hadn't lasted very long, but uh, the first time we won uh, the Summer National Championship, I got a call from that band director, and he asked me, now that you've won the big one, what are you going to do next? And my, my answer was, I'm going back to school tomorrow to teach lessons. Um, <laughs> And, and what I saw with that program is because it was built solely on winning trophies, it disintegrated. Basically, it, it burned really hot for a little while, but they used up all of their, um, their resources, essentially, and the, the personal resources, especially. On a much greater subject, though, I, you know, that was kind of one of the first lessons, but um, it became really clear that it, it's really about something completely different. It's about creating great people and working together. Um, and our goal from the, one of my first comments to the band every year is if you've come here to win trophies, you've come to the wrong place. Mm. That's not, that's not who we try to be. That's not who we, you know, we never talk about what do we, what we have to do to win at this contest or to finish ahead of somebody else. All we talk about is being good people. The first lesson that we learn is how to be good people. Um, well, and not, completely how to be good people, but that's the starting point. Um, we, we talk about, we have a, a, a band mantra, as it were, called um, pride, which in itself could be a kind of a negative word if used in the wrong way, but ours is an acronym for personal responsibility and daily effort. And we talk about that in, in um, from all aspects. Um, one of the lessons that we talk about is if you're walking down a hallway and you see paper on the floor, do you pick it up or do you just leave it and wait for the maintenance people to pick it up? And if you do pick it up, are you picking it up because a teacher is watching and you want the brownie points from picking up and being a nice person? Or do you pick it up when nobody's watching? And we talk about the fact that it's much more valuable to pick that paper up when nobody's there. It's much more uh, of a, a human thing to do to to do the right thing when people are not watching. And so um, it starts with that and, and, and we never let up on, on living up to your responsibility. One of the things that happens with that though is that it starts to spread everywhere. And when it spreads into the music, basically people are being responsible. They'll practice because they realize they're responsible to the rest of the group. They'll practice because they're responsible to the conduct or the, the composer, not the conductor, but the composer to make the music as real as as they possibly can. And when you get a whole lot of people working like that, it gets well, good things happen. That's amazing. So have you um have you can you talk about the the impact that you've seen that have on on the students over the years? I mean it's been forty six years, so <laughs> Um, yes, and, and, um, sometimes. Well, we have we have graduated some amazing people, and and sometimes um, they come in amazing, and they just get even more amazing as they as they they grow through through uh, the experience. Sometimes we we have kids who come in and they are not at all amazing yet. They're still um, they don't like to hear the word, but immature. Um, and sometimes it takes a while for it to to catch. Um, we, uh, I can, I can bring up a, we had a, a saxophone player many, many years ago. And, um, as a freshman, he was as irresponsible as you could possibly get, uh, 
he'd ask to go to the restroom and he'd be gone for 30 minutes before he said, where did so-and-so go? Or he'd just show up an hour late to a rehearsal and be standing down outside the field, just looking and watching everybody else work. Wow. And, and it went, it went on for a long time. He, he, he progressed relatively slowly as far as all of that goes. But after a while, it started to change him. In his senior year, he was he was not the section leader, but he was the assistant to the section leader. And he was amazing. Uh, and he, he worked really, really hard. He was a great example for the younger kids. And for a long time, that, that same section, the kids who went through the section, um, I won't tell you his name, but um, they, had a, they had a mantra that they said, if so-and-so can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> But it changed him. I mean, and he went off to college, was very successful, and has had a very successful life. So it, it is a. It's not just the outstanding players that absorb that. It, it's all of the students. When I was doing the um, interviews, I talked to um, Jeremy Turner, who's your assistant band director, and he's um, a, a former student, and he came through your program, and yes. he he talked about that. He said he's seen it seen the um the influence on that and uh how it has a ripple effect so when you change the saxophone player right then he goes out and changes it you know his the way he behaves and the way he um lives his life then changes other people and it's just like this you know ripple effect that goes through through the universe if you will that is always part of the last message. We have a, a banquet at the end of the year for the seniors to honor the seniors. And um, one of the, well, if not the main message, it is part of the, the main message is to take this with you. This is not just a four year thing. This is, this is a lifelong process and you should carry that with you. And that's, what's really amazing. Cause I didn't expect that when I called that, you know, you get these, I've got the press release right here, but you get these press releases with all your accolades and then, you know, out of the gate, you're like, it's not about that. It's not about all the awards. It's not about, um, yeah, I mean, that stuff's wonderful. And, you know, obviously you and the band earn it, but it's about more than that. And um, which was a wonderful thing. Okay, we're coming up on a break. Um, before we go, I just want to give a pitch to the, the, the newspaper. You can check us out at chicagocatholic.com. We have, um, you can follow what's going on with the Pope at the Vatican. Cardinal Supich writes regularly, and you can sign up uh, for a subscription. It's $30, and we come out about every two weeks, and that supports our ministry. You can also follow us on social media or sign up for a free e-newsletter that we send out about three times a week. Again, that's at chicagocatholic.com. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Greg Bim and talking about the Marian Catholic Band. Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847 847- 782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. This is your 44. 
for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. I see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed, what, what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders, teach, Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Catholic Charities Family Self-Sufficiency Program has assisted thousands of single parents who are working to become more self-sufficient through education and employment opportunities. Our experienced case managers accompany participants for up to five years on their journey to identify, address, and break down barriers to improving their quality of life and achieving meaningful goals for themselves and for their families. Professional, compassionate assistance is offered in a safe and trusting environment as participants develop the skills needed to become financially stable and able to support themselves. Every achievement starts with the decision to try. To learn more about Catholic Charities Family Self-Sufficiency Program, call 847-782-4233 or visit catholiccharities.net. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. My name is Joyce DeRiga. That was a video of the Marian Catholic High School Band at one of their competitions. I was just getting into it. I was like just watching, and I, for and I forgot that we had to stop. So my, <laughs> <laughs> my um, guest today is Greg Bim. He's the retiring band director for Marian Catholic, and he's been there for 46 years. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we, he... Under his guidance, the band has won seven Bands of America Grand National Championships and 42 consecutive state titles in Illinois and a bunch of other things. But um, he's he's turning in his baton, but he's not leaving Marian Catholic. And so, Greg, when we were doing when we were talking over the um, last week, we talked about the value of fine arts programs. You know, you often hear about fine arts getting cut from uh, school programs and you know it's maybe the first thing to go but it has such a value and especially maybe music and and band in particular um can we talk about that a little bit in your thoughts sure um on on two levels um the one uh overall just um if you if you simply train someone's mind that's what you end up with. Right now, with all the artificial intelligence stuff, I'm not sure right. why we even oh, need to think about that. Is 
you know, if that's all it is, you're just you're just creating another computer. Um, the arts in general, um, and obviously my favorite music, um, lead you to a much deeper um, level of of humanity, um, and it, it it it's not replaceable. Uh, if you look at at all of society from the beginning of society. Um, there has always been art. It is something that that fulfills us. It's something that binds us together. Um, it's something that that uh, teaches our heart and our soul what to do with all that we can learn. You know, you can learn all the math in the world, but somewhere you need to draw um, uh, the the uh, the thought of what to do with that. What is the right thing to do with that? Um, personally, I I, I like. Uh, on an individual level, uh, teaching music, especially, uh, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm a, I think in band terms, um, but in, in band, in order to perform a, a, a great, well, in order to perform at all, but especially if you're going to perform at a very high level, there are many things that happen. You need to have knowledge. You need to know what you're trying to do. You need to understand what you're trying to play. You need to understand all of the mechanics but you also have to add the physical side of things. You have to you have to look at uh, you have to understand what the muscles need to do. And the only thing that can do the muscle part is repetition. Is just the practice um, to be a great athlete. You have to practice the physical side of of being a great athlete. Um, to be a great mathematician, you have to understand the mental side of mathematics. Music puts those together. Band puts those together. You have to have the mental side where you understand all the stuff that you're trying to create. Then you have to practice uh, and have long-term goals, which is a big thing these days. In in my opinion, it's very much missing in our in our current society. But you have to have long-term goals because it takes time to practice things. Right. You put those together and then combine them with your heart, and then you finally have music. And so you're taking the uh, even three sides a, a triangular view at at uh at growth and accomplishing those all with music and especially with band you were talking about how um telling me in the interview about how um there's that that personal responsibility comes through right because you can play you know you could play perfectly but the person next to you plays the wrong notes that's what the audience is going to hear yeah, um, and we, we do talk about that from the responsibility side. If, if you are in a math class and you ace your test and the person across the aisle from you flunks their test, nothing happens in that interchange. You still get an A, they still get an F. And, and no one is affected by someone else's um, uh, success or failure. In band or in music in general, if everybody plays in tune, except for one person who plays wrong notes, the audience is going to hear the wrong note. So it becomes essential for everybody to carry their load. Everybody has to play the right notes. Everybody has to play in tune. Everybody has to play with a great sound. Everybody, even the, the shaping of the music, it's called phrasing. The phrasing of the music has to be done by everyone for it to be effective. And it's, you know, it's one of the few things, even, even in athletics, if you have a basketball team and you have one superstar, a lot of times that's really what you need. You know, the the Bulls without Michael Jordan would not have won six in a, you know six or two three peats, I guess. Yeah. Um, in in high school softball, a lot of times if you watch the, these really really successful teams, they just have a pitcher who is like, you know, uh, incredible. And, and they can ride the back of, a, of, of an incredible pitcher. It's not, you know, the team does play a role. I don't want to overstate that, but, but a superstar can really make a difference. In band, everybody has to be a starter. Yeah. So I'm sorry, you, if people are listening to the radio and they don't see this on the video, um, we're showing more of the band performing, and you can hear a little bit of the audio um, in the back. So if you aren't listening to this, that's what that is. So what advice would you have um, for maybe a new band director coming into this for the first time and looking at, you know, what to do with a program or, you know, how to, <laughs> yeah. 
that's that's pretty big. But I, I, I yeah, maybe one or two things. Yeah, out of a hundred. Yeah, good. The first thing is always remember that the the students are the center. They're why we do this. They are all decisions need to be made in the context of that. You know, sometimes the decisions are a little bit uncomfortable. You know, where where um, we have to practice a little bit longer or whatever, but. The, you're still, as long as the students are the center of all of those decisions, the center of what you do, um, then you're going to be making good decisions in general. The second side is is the personal side about uh, being a band director. I, I once had a conversation with one of the, the greatest band directors of all time. His name was William Ravelli. He was the band director at the University of Michigan for many, many years. And he is, he is famous, very, very famous. And we talked and I was, I was very young, it was before I came to Marion and I asked him relatively the same question. And he, he said, he, obviously he was an old timer born, you know, way back in the, well, he was directing a band in like 1930s. Wow. Um, but he said, young man, wear the seat of your pants out studying your scores, yeah. which you know, really, when you stretch that just a little bit, it, it is it is essential for band directors to know the music. Like you really have to know and 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 uh, spend a lot of time studying. Um, but if you if you expand that, he was saying, don't quit learning. Mm. You have to make sure that you put in your time to make sure that you know what you need to know um, and always continue to grow. And so the two things would be. Keep the students at the center, study your music, and continue to grow all the time. I honestly, I'm still, uh, you know, I just saw a couple of things watching other people, and I went, because I don't have year 47 to, <laughs> to apply that that new thing that I saw, you know, and and and, uh, uh, but it's it, it's important that we keep learning. I think. It, uh, not just as a band director, but uh, I mentioned Sister Mary Alberta. Um, uh, it, uh, from She's one of the Springfield Dominicans, and she was my first principal here. And, and I just mentioned that she is, she is still doing computer input at Sacred Heart Griffin down in Springfield, even though she's in her 90s. And when you talk to her, she is just as sparklingly intelligent as she always was. And I think that's because she's kept mentally active all of these years. You know, or if it's if it's in the food she eats, I want some of that. Right, <laughs> right. Tell I, I this was a favorite, uh, a fun part of the interview. That um, and for the for those of you who are listening or watching, you can um, go to chicagocatholic.com. We go to press today, so Greg's uh, the story on Greg will be in um, up uh, by like tomorrow or Thursday. But you knew in, in fifth grade that you wanted to be a band director. Yeah. Tell, share that story. I thought that was, that my, was nice. My grandfather um, was a salesperson, but he played the trumpet. He's a little farm town, uh, Wynette, Illinois. And uh, my, my father was a TV repairman, but learned to play the trumpet from his father. And so I was the third generation trumpet player. Uh, it was sort of preordained that I was going to play the trumpet. By the way, my son played the trumpet and now my grandson is in sixth grade playing the well he's going into seventh grade playing the trumpet so you know five generations yeah. so it was it was relatively preordained that I was going to be a trumpet player and, and I started in fifth grade and was immediately taken with it I, I think um, part of it was how how um, on task uh, how dedicated my father was to practicing with me he he worked as a TV repairman as I said and his hours were um, Four days a week, he worked nine to nine. Two days a week, he worked nine to six. And he only had Sunday off. And yet, outside of those times, when he'd come home at nine o'clock at night, we would spend an hour practicing together from nine o'clock until 10 o'clock, even though, even though he'd worked 12 hours right. that day. I'm sorry. I don't... I think we're wrapping up. We have a, a few seconds oh. left left to go but yeah so to finish that story so he, you figured out in fifth grade that that's what you wanted to do and that's what you it was, yeah if yes it was it was kind of immediate and and i am so blessed that i have gotten to do that very few people 
even going into right. college, know what they want to do. And even after college, a lot of people don't know what they want to do or they choose something and then they say they've got to do something else. And for me, it was a fifth grade choice. And I, I haven't swerved from that for, well, 50 One. something years. And counting. So, and, and counting. counting. So wonderful. Well, Greg, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'd encourage people to uh, Google Marian Catholic Band or get out to see them if you can. Um, and uh, also sign up for Chicago Catholic. At, check us out at chicagocatholic.com. And until we see you again, thanks again so much, Greg. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good day.